Hey, what's up, guys? It's time for another General Hospital review. And just a heads up, I'm babysitting my friend's puppies. And they, so you might hear a little barking in the background. Um, why am I so sweaty? I, I, if I still look a little sweaty, it's because they escaped while I was doing my Days of Our Lives <laughs> review. And so I was like, it's a good um, time to clean their little area and um, put down fresh paper and then I had to scoop them back up but you know they still were telling them Here, don't mess with that don't mess with that <laughs> and I was like I'm sorry too and I, I just can't let you run while in my house while I'm doing my reviews but um we'll try playtime again later this afternoon <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the review. I um I did it again. I binge watched the whole week. Um last night. Yeah. Um uh, didn't take as long because yeah, Monday was a repeat. I don't know why they um showed a repeat. They had um time to show an episode and you know, they're still in a little behind because of all the interruption. So why not? Plus, you know, a lot of people were home, you know, they could have watched live like myself. I could have watched live, but anyway, I, I'm talking a lot. I'll try not to make this video very long. I didn't take many notes, and it is I, this is me. I did not many, not much stuff happened this week. I don't know. I guess because we didn't have that extra day. But anyway, the reading of Victor's Will was this week. <laughs> it's funny because I remember last week I was like, um, I forgot to talk about it the week before. Everybody getting on the invitations, and I'm like, didn't I even talk about it last week at all? But you know. Tuesday's episode, they started off with that. So, I'm like, I swear during my first reading of mine. Because they also read my mind about Mason, too. Um, which I'll get back, um, talk about in a while. <laughs> so, they're doing a reading on the well. And I was like, where's Val Anna and Valentine didn't show up. <laughs> Anna was late, and Martin showed up in Valentine's spot. Cause I guess Valentine is back at work. <laughs> But anyways, um, Ava got a photo of a gargoyle. That's what it was. I was like, what the hell is happening? I, I mean, so I had to look at one of the um the daytime confidential reviews. I was like, I, I what is the, what is the word I'm looking for? But yeah, um, she that was funny. I guess she was gonna put it in her gallery. And Alexis got a Russian um Russian doll. One of those um. You know, you could just put little ones, stack them up into one little thing for all the Davis girls and gave Sam a tarot card, um, deck of tarot cards. Um, so maybe she'll have better luck and love. Victor. Oh, and, and he was on the screen. We actually get to hear him talk, so it was good to see him. I'm going to miss him. Charles, very handsome. Very handsome man. So hopefully he pops up somewhere else down the line. <laughs> And Charlotte got a um, necklace and a pendant. Um, I can only imagine what's in there. So Valentine's a little. I don't know if I'll give this to Charlotte, but um, Valentine's my favorite. He got the middle finger from some statue. Um, I don't know if they ever said where the statue was from, but I thought that was funny. Lordy. Oh shit, I forgot what he um I don't think he ever said what he left Anna, but Anna got arrested um for being a double agent and tre um treason. Um if you can hear the dogs are barking again. They're very mad and they wanna <laughs> Oh oh I don't know where that comes from. Anyways, um like wait, what the fuck? Um I'm very confused by this. They didn't really I might have dismissed it because I was a little out of it last night. In and out of sleep. Well, I fell asleep when I was watching Bowling and Beautiful, but I was awake, but still a little out there. <sighs> what exactly was Anna being a double agent with? I mean, I guess the stuff with Victor, maybe, I guess. And then also Treason. But I'm not sure how she betrayed her country by going after Victor, but. Okay, but um, 
So the new director of the WSB doesn't like Anna. Um, so it makes me think that this is, well, I don't know if you could say, well, I guess you could say that they don't like Anna because they're willing to make her accountable for actions or whatever that she's done. I wonder who the director is. I was like, I'm guessing they have some sort of history with, um, with Anna, possibly. So they keep saying the new director, new director. They never said a name. And, you know, nobody ever asks, who's the new director? But, um, who's, uh, I'm assuming it's a he. So, um, where do we know it from? But, yeah, but they were talking about maybe pressing charges against other people for, you know, living her slide all these years. And they brought up Robert. And she basically said, I know where the bodies are buried. So, you burned me down. Um, yeah, the whole WSB goes down, too. So, yeah. So, you know, if you mess with Robert or anybody else, I care about. So, I guess I just left it at that. So, Anna's not going to be an agent anymore. Um, and she's like, this is what Victor wanted. This is what Victor wanted. And so, Anna's not an agent. Well, she'll be home more, probably. But will Anna do not being an agent? Hmm. But speaking of Valentine, he did eventually <laughs> show up at Laura's after Anna got arrested. Um, Laura was talking about, um... Victor left Nicholas some land in Russia. Um, apparently, that's part of where Nicholas was chilling after Valentin shot him. <laughs> Laura didn't want to say the words. <laughs> but Valentin said it was in self-defense. I was on a break from the show, so I don't I don't know how that all came about. But, interesting. but Laura thinks that Nicholas may be there now, hiding out. So, and she wants to go over there to see, um, Valentin doesn't want to think it's a very good idea, um, but he agreed to go with her, um, he said that Nicholas would have a hard time trying to leave the country because of, you know, everything going on over there, so, hmm. but, um, Valentin knows other place, so, so another adventure, maybe, but I don't know if Mason will be keeping Nicholas there, but I'm curious to see what could be over there. I don't know. But who knows? Mason could have been working with um, Victor. Um, could have talked to Victor about... But I don't know. Why would Victor leave Nicholas in the hands of Mason? But then again, how would... Why, you know, where would Mason get the means to, you know, help Nicholas be on life support and stuff? This is a soap opera. But there's a casting on, so you never know what could be up. Plus, you know, awfully convenient that Mason comes back to town around the time of Victor's will reading. <laughs> Which is another storyline I've been questioning. You know, I don't, honestly, I don't remember if I mentioned it. I think I might have mentioned it and just forgot, but I don't know. I've been thinking about Mason and Nicholas, you know, what is Mason trying to, you know, holding over Ava? Well, we know he's holding Nicholas and Ava over Ava and Austin, but what is he going to do with this information? That's what I've been wondering about. It's been since the nurse's ball, which was back in April. Yeah, because that's when they were, um, their hospital's, um, anniversary. Back in April, that's when they did the nurses' ball and stuff. But Mason, Mason wasn't there. Just Ava and Austin went to make people think that they're like a couple or whatever. So everyone gets suspicious about why they're spending so much time together. So yeah, it's been about two months since we've seen Mason, but he said that he was out of town handling some business, which Austin makes me think. I'm assuming it has to do with Nicholas. <laughs> but yeah, Abraham went to the hospital to talk to Austin to let him know about the land that Victor left Nicholas. Um, <laughs> yeah, so apparently Mason wants Ava to use her family connections to help him with something. 
he didn't go into great detail, so I'm guessing that's something we'd have to wait for Monday's episode about now. But um, we shall see. That's, that's definitely a storyline I'm very interested in and see how it goes about. But apparently Mason's been watching Ava because he said that she was going around acting like she don't really miss her husband, which I don't think she really does. But. Which is like, well, come on. Well, Ava's been dealing with Nina drama, so that's kept her busy, definitely. <laughs> but, um, Spence, um, Victor left Spencer a key to a safe deposit box. So, yeah, he ended up telling Trina about it. And, um, she was curious about what was inside. Um, well, before they got to that part, while Nicholas was at the reading of the will, Trina was finding out who her daddy is. And they just did this, like, build up to finding out the results. It was, like, it was ready, but then everybody had to hang out in the hospital for a while before the results came out. And the results came out, and um, <laughs> Trina just blurted it out. Curtis is my father. I'm like, can yeah, yeah. figure that. But we thought maybe there would have been some sort of twist in there and, and Marcus was still the dad. But no, Curtis is definitely the dad, which um I don't know, might be some people out there that likes it, but I don't. I like Marcus better than Curtis, especially after the last few weeks, definitely. Well, you know, it's been a few years actually, ever since, you know him and Jordan started having problems, you know, off and on. He's had his little shitty-ass moments. <laughs> Especially this week with him moving back in with Portia and not telling Jordan. Portia ended up telling Jordan. No, but anyways, before I get to that, um, yeah. Um, but Trina says that Marcus is still gonna be her daddy. So I wonder how long that's going to last. I would hope it will still last, but, you know, so far first. Um, as you know, he's tired, he's not around very much. Um, so I guess so what they might end up having it that Trina is more connected with connects more with Curtis. I mean, and she's already close with um Hat Daddy and who knows what Stella. Um, Stella's really cool. So I feel bad for him, especially when he went into the elevator and started punching the walls and crying. Oh my god. I'll give you a hug, Marcus. A beautiful bald head. <laughs> Poor Dan, just feel bad for him, you know. Just uh, I mean biology's not everything. Just you know, you can still be family and love somebody, um, who's not biology related to you, but yeah, just finding out that all these years, she wasn't actually biologically yours. You know, not biologically connected definitely really hurts. And then, even though Curry says she's not going to step on toes, and Trina says, you know, he's still her father, you know, it's still, you never know, shit happens, so. And, but Trina's not sure if she wants to go home when um, summer's over, or school's over, but no. Joss offered for her to come stay with her and Carly, so. <laughs> she was like, oh, she asks Carly, but, you know, with everything going on, Joss didn't answer this week, but we shall see how that goes, but, um, yeah, Curtis moved back in, and, um, Stella came home, and, um, they all left Stella with Hat Daddy, um, eating gumbo, <laughs> And then Stella came back the next day to get the gumbo recipe and it's like, bullshit. You wanted to talk to Curtis and find out the results. And so yeah, they sit down and talk and Curtis wondering why she didn't tell him and stuff. That's Portia's job. But yeah, Portia told Jordan that um Curtis is Porsche is um Trina's biological father and that he moved back in. And Jordan was like, What what? She moved back in? Yeah, so Jordan let Curtis have it. It's like, um, you were ready to take me to bed, but now you're living back with your wife. And so basically, he wants to work things out with Portia, but still has some sort of feelings for Jordan. And Jordan's like, 
why am I even fucking with you perfectly? And I'm like, right, Jordan, just just leave Curtis alone. <laughs> you know, I would say Jordan go and tell Portia everything just because, but Jordan's being, Jordan's nice, so. <laughs> but I know shit that Curtis said and did, has done to her since, you know, back when they were married. Um, she should definitely blast him, but she's nice. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, he was um talking about, you know, I didn't make our marriage work, but I'm going, you know, he didn't do anything to try to make their marriage work, so he's going to try to do that with Portia. Oh, Lordy. Neither one. Portia and George, even everything that Portia has done, still, she deserves better than Curtis's whack ass. But, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Spencer, Trina, and Joss, they went to the pool. The pool's open! So we get lots of pool scenes. Yeah, Dex showed up too. His, his 20, his 12 pack. <laughs> and Spencer is not really happy that Dex is there. And Trina's like, don't start anything, you know, because, you know, you want to be a guardian to your. Um, well, brother, you know, that's not going to look good in court if you're starting a fight, especially in public, with a veteran, especially, <laughs> and unprovoked, so, she's like, I guess he's going to listen to her this time, <laughs> but he brought up Cam, and uh, doesn't like what Dex did to him, but Shana's like, um, Cam's moved on. He got a scholarship and he's off doing his thing and Joss and Dex are happy. Just get the fuck up there. So I guess he listened. <laughs> Cause he he shut up and then he also um Dex was showing him how to block a punch. <laughs> Trina had told Joss about the fight and she's like, Oh, you know, Dex didn't have any markings on him. You know, I examined him thoroughly. She didn't say all that, but I was saying the thing she can train us like, um, yeah, Dex blocked the punch. And Josh knows she wanted to laugh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they were talking about the, um, the safe deposit box key that Victor left. And Trina kept, you know, pushing Spencer. It's like, come on, let's, you know, go to the bank, check it out. And he's like, okay, you know, Spencer just follow. <laughs> he just follows Trina, and um, which is a good thing that they actually did go to the safe deposit box because they found the letter that they, they found a drug that um Esme used to drug Oz that nearly killed him, and then also a letter she had wrote to Maggie, um, her um nanny. I guess she didn't send it. <laughs> Cause it's in the box, um, and she was just talking about um, how she was drugging Oz. You know, she couldn't let him spill the beans on what's going on. And also, there was a um, tablet in there, and um, Trina had a portable charger, which was good. Um, so they charged it up a little bit and watched a video of Esme Docs. Buying the burner phone. Like, well, damn, Victor. <laughs> Victor, um, Victor did have Esme, but why didn't he expose Esme from the beginning? You know, why didn't he just hand this over to the police? I don't know, I guess Victor has his own ways. Who knows, maybe this is. I don't know. I don't know, but Spencer and Trina, especially Trina, thinks it's a really great idea to take this to the police, but I don't know. I don't know. It's just I just feel like something's going to happen to where Esme's just going to get off on everything. But I don't know. We shall see. But, um, but the proof is there. So, but yeah, also they were... They, you know, they had a charge drop because she doesn't remember being Esme and doing all this stuff. So, you know, she's going to look sim um, sympathetic to the court. So, not sure where they're going with this, but I don't know. I guess it's better evidence. They have better evidence with this stuff. 
Mm-hmm. But now that I think, of, but thinking about it, it's like, you know, Spencer kind of had a hand in Victor's demise. So, but then he, Victor, and death hands Spencer this great stuff that can help Trina out. So, <laughs> wow. So, see how that goes. But, um, that was, um, we'll see how that goes. But, Esme make um she thought she was gonna get fired because she forwarded an email from a um I guess a source to other people I forgot like a mass email or whatever so she's freaking out thinking she's gonna get fired and somehow Gregory found out I guess he was on the email and he came to put the fires out while Alexis was at the reading of the will and Esme is like I thought I was just gonna be answering phones and I'm like yeah you. Know, think you're gonna do one job and then when you get to work you start doing everything <laughs> you get involved in little everything <laughs> at the company but um alexis is like you're not fired today she said today you know she didn't say i'm not going to ever fire you so but she's like clock out <laughs> she's like basically i'm done seeing your ass today even though i've been here for two seconds so bye <laughs> yeah, and she was surprised that um, Gregor was there. She's like, you don't ghost me, and now you show up on my job. <laughs> yeah, and they ended up talking about a position on the board that hasn't been filled yet. And she's like, well, you know, it hasn't been filled, so, you know, if you want it. He's like, sure. And I'm like, really, Alexis? He's been ghosting you, but you give him a job? <laughs> and I guess it's her way of... You know, hey, he can't ghost me if he's working for me. <laughs> so I, I guess in a way that's good to go, girl. That's a, that's good. That's a good way to get tabs on your man. Definitely, you know, he's got to come to work eventually. If he wants, to. if he wants the job, he's got to come to work eventually. <laughs> I don't know. That's so funny, but yeah, he's just he's grateful for her support. So. And that's what he says. So we'll see how long that support lasts. How long is he grateful for the support? Because, <laughs> you know, you're grateful for somebody's support, but then you just have one of your episodes where whatever you have is just like at its worst. And someone's trying to be there for you, and you can get an attitude and push them away. But, you know, this is Alexis we're talking about. You know, you don't have a. Uh, I doubt that she would walk away that easily stubborn woman <laughs> but it's good to see more alexis and i didn't think about it sam got the invitation but she didn't show up there you know she was at the quarter mains with drew and um she took scout there and scout i don't know if that's the same scout because you know we don't see them very often but she was gorgeous she was like a little mini kelly monica it was too cute um they're playing with oscar's old monica which i hope they cleaned um but, um, yeah, because, you know, this stuff like that collects dust and all up in the little tracks and stuff. I'm like, ooh. Just, like, blow into it and then, like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, you got blown up. You know, let the, um, <laughs> let the dust out, like, on the old Nintendo games, you know, those big old things. And it says on it, do not blow in it. But, you know, we still blow in it to get the dust out so we can play. Plug the plug it back. <laughs> oh, kids do say that that they don't understand. <laughs> they got this, so they just gotta worry about scratches. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, she went to um play the songs for the birds. I'm like, oh lordy, <laughs> but it was really good to see Drew, Sam, and Scout have scenes because. You know, since Drew's been back, you know, they just rewrote everything about him to fit into um, Carla's world, which is pathetic. <laughs> I mean, they could have did them as a couple, but, you know, they didn't need to be so dramatic. And the fact that Drew didn't, you know, he doesn't share the connections that Drew had back then, you know, with Sam Scout and Curtis, but you know, we've been seeing more Drew and Curtis, but, you know, still, if you have to rewrite a character just to make your story work, it means that your story is shit. I digress. 
But anyways, oh, I put that out there. <laughs> oh, I forgot Molly was on this week too. Um, she had a brief scene with TJ at the hospital with um Jordan and um Holiday. That's her name. That's playing Molly. It's like the more I see her, the more I see Haley in her. So it's not like. It's, but she looks, she looks a little taller though. I don't know. She might have been in heels. I wasn't. I didn't really look at the whole outfit. I don't know if they even showed the whole outfit. It's just that her hair is a little darker. But yeah, but that, yeah, that was that was her first scenes with TJ because last week Haley was in scenes with um TJ and we first saw Holiday as Molly when she went to Alexis' house. So okay, now I'm remembering everything. Look at me remembering stuff. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> but anyways, um, they're talking about alternatives to starting a family, which makes me think back to last week when um, Christina brought up surrogacy. So I'm like, oh, don't tell me Christina is really going to be a surrogate. Oh, Lordy. I don't want to see it. But I can see great drama along with that. But and it gives the Davis Girl storyline, so I guess I can be okay with it. But I will push it. Let wait, let it happen. Let's see what happens with this. But yeah, that that's one thing. General Hospital doesn't need more babies. They don't know what to do with the ones that they do have. But anyways, lastly, I will talk about the Sun and Carly, um, Nina, Drew drama with the um sec i think i got the letters right now because <laughs> i just anyways um yeah sending carly at the hospital while willow was having her surgery and um he tells her that diane is looking into finding out if there is a deal offer for carly um to escape prison by turning him in and she thanks him as Michael's walking in and of course Michael wants to be nosy but Sonny just told him that you know him and Nina are engaged Michael's like I don't know <laughs> but Sonny says that he knows that it is all Willow's choice if she wants Nina in her life or not but he walks away and Michael pushes Carly to find out what really they were talking about. And Carly said, you know, tells him about the possible deal to turn in Sunny. And um, Jocelyn walks over, of course. She's like, you should take it. <laughs> you don't deserve to be in prison. Um, Josh, you know, when somebody breaks the law, they... um need to face the consequences of breaking the law and sometimes when you break the law you go to prison so jocelyn is being a hypocrite so all carly's done because not just this she's broken other many laws but this is the one that could stick and send her to prison but um yeah but sonny needs to go to prison for everything he does which, yes, I agree, he definitely does, but saying that Carly doesn't need to go is hypocritical and stupid. Just my opinion. I'm just saying. But, anyways, since she made a um, comment to Michael about, you know, involving innocent people or whatever, that got Carly suspicious, but, you know, she didn't dig. <laughs> but then, um later that was monday's episode i mean not monday tuesday's episode then on thursday's episode friday's episode um joss was trying to get dex to give her the recording of sunny making that deal so that she could hand it over to the cops and get her mom out because she doesn't want her mom to go to prison because then donna would just have sunny and nina and Dex is like, you know, she'll have you too. And you need your mother also. And Josh is like, but I'm grown. And I'm like, girl, you're not grown. You're still a little child um, whining over everything under the fucking sun. It's 
just you're just a little you're still a little brat. That's what you are. You're still a young little brat. <laughs> Grow up, definitely. But anyways, Dex she was mad because Dex didn't have a copy of it. He just sent. So he just gave Michael the own copy, and Michael took it to Carly. <laughs> She's like, you know, because Carly she didn't want to turn in Sunny. You know, she spent all these years defending him, covering up for him. So she's like, she's not going to do that, turn on him um, after everything they've been through, blah, 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 blah. So Michael's like, hey, you don't have to say anything. Here, I have the proof. Here's the flash drive. So um, I was trying to figure out, you know, I was confused about the whole dealings, but apparently Sunny is breaking the national security code. If I wrote down that correctly, because I wrote it down after I had already watched the show. So, <laughs> anyways, but um, yeah, I forgot. Oh, because he was dealing. Oh, that's because he was dealing with the government of whatever country or whatever the people are from. Anyways, I don't really care. But Carly was wondering how he got it, and he said that um, he planned to set it up for um starting to be recorded to do that but he didn't mention that it was Dex that he hired to infiltrate Sunny's organization so when Carly finds that out please strangle the roof <laughs> hell out of your damn son slap his ass because you know not only was he he's putting Dex at, in danger Sunny in danger um Jocelyn and Ginger, because Jocelyn ends up falling for him, and now she's dating him, so, you know, you know how Sonny could be, you know, he could want to kill Dex or whatever, I mean, think, you remember he shot Dante, because, you know, he found out that he was a cop, so, you know, what do you think he's gonna do with Dex, you know, and Jocelyn's in the way, and Jocelyn is just defending Dex left and right, so it's just a little bit freaking mess. Yeah, Lordy. So that's something we can wait for um, my next episode to watch. <laughs> but Sunny did get in that space at the pool. I know everybody's like chilling, relaxing at the pool with this light clothes on. And Sunny shows up in this hot ass suit. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sweating for him. Like, <laughs> Lordy, he gets all in Ned's face about, you know being selfish and wanting to turn in family for his own good. And I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? Being selfish. You live a selfish life. You you live in the mob knowing what the mob has done to your family. You killed your first wife and first child. You know, your others, your youngest son got blown up because of stuff doing with you. You shot, you shot your own oldest son because, <laughs> you know, of your dealings. And not only that, you know, tons of other stuff. Other people have been in danger because of your selfish life living. But, yeah, Ned is selfish for turning on his family, you know. And B, he, well, we know Ned didn't do it. But like I said, if Ned really did do it. All he was doing is turning in criminals. That's not. I, I still can't believe that. I, I mean, it's general. It's a soap opera and more like like general hospital or somebody. It's a soap that would do a storyline where the um, guilty, where the people doing the right thing, are the bad people. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. <laughs> but, um, anyway, it's just stupid. <laughs> yeah, Dante and Sam were there too. And Sam's like, I think you might want to stop this. And Dante just walked over, but he didn't say anything. Liv had jumped in and was defending Ned and actually acting like a wife for once. She's like, You don't have to believe Ned, but Sonny, you should believe me. Ned didn't do this. And I was like, well, if I find out that you did, that's uh, basically like, you ain't gonna find out, fucker, because my ass didn't do it. <laughs> I'm like, Sonny, you're fucking the person that did it. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it didn't Dante um in a fair gets in the middle of it. You know, just telling them to let it go because it's like, you know, if you start shit out here, you know, kinda gonna have to arrest you. You know, that's not gonna look good for you. Basically. It's like, oh, rest my stepfather rest my biological father, rest my stepfather, you know, drama. <laughs> about first but i thought it was funny when ned and Liv walked away they were talking and Ned just had olivia like keep repeating herself that you know she believes him finally <laughs> yeah i swear she got some making up to do and ned should make her make up for it but you know ned's a good guy he's not gonna make her do nothing but i say she definitely needs to make up that shit <laughs> <sighs> Lordy, drama, but, uh, but anyways, it's good to see Ned and Wally Chris. As I was talking on my um Days of Our Lives review, you know, if you didn't know, he um he plays Justin on Days of Our Lives, and he was on finally this week. Got to see him for episode double the Wally Kerf, the better I say. <laughs> But Nina already start. I forgot to say, Nina started her shit by telling Liv about the potential deal that Carly could get if she turned in um, Sunny. And so Liv, she saw Robert and Diane talking, um, and she goes and interrupts. <sighs> about the deal and Robert, um, they asked him flat out, but Robert didn't confirm or deny it. He just walked away. <laughs> and then eventually he told Diane, you know, hey, if you need information, just call and make an appointment, you know. You know, let's get it on the books. You know, don't, you know, try to act like you want to be all sweet and cuddly, basically. So... Nina is messing with other people too. <laughs> messing up um Diane and Robert trying to get close. <sighs> um But I wish I'm not complaining. Robert definitely deserves better. But no, think about it. We didn't see Robert with um Robert wasn't there with Anna. But that annoying ass um, WSB agent from before was there. <laughs> That's why she didn't try to recruit Curtis again. Yeah, but Martin was there for um, Anna, so we got to see Martin two days, so that was good. Um, oh, wow. I guess that's all that happened. Oh, except for we did find out that Willow is going to make a full recovery. So that means this dumbass bullshit storyline is finally the fuck over. Oh, excuse my language. <laughs> uh, well, anyways. <laughs> Sorry about my language. But that's all I had to say about this week's episode. Let me know in the comments below what did you enjoy and didn't enjoy this week. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already because why not? <laughs> and share the video even if it's just to make fun of me for whatever reason. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I had to say. Um, This video is way shorter than last week. So I, I, that's because we didn't have that extra day. <laughs> that extra episode. Talking about everything that happened in the Monday episode would have pushed it over an hour, maybe. I don't know, but it's finally the sun shining here. It's been raining on and off. It's been dark raining on and off ever since last Saturday, but we got some sunshine and it's warm. So, going to enjoy that while it lasts. <laughs> enjoy the rest of your, your weekend, and I will see you guys here next week, maybe. Because why not? <laughs> Anyways, love you guys. Thank you for watching. As always, 